Essentials of Illinois School Finances, Chapter 3, Notes. Let's get it. Property tax cycle. So schools gain their main source of revenue from the Illinois property tax system. We know that. Uh, we cannot fund schools without taxes. To secure revenue, cities and schools must have a levy in order to mandate tax income. The levy is the amount of money that you have to raise in order to fund those schools. You have to raise that money regardless of your property values and regardless of the property tax. Schools have less control over revenues than expenditures. Why? A school just can't mandate what it gets from a neighborhood. So if your finances are low one year, you have to control what? Your expenditures. Each revenue source must be taken seriously and carefully. This is why your school budget manager and your superintendent are crucial. You have to meet expenditures without overruns and debt. Let's look at the property tax cycle. It's two separate parts. There's assessment and there's the levy. So with assessment, that's the process of valuing real property for tax purposes. What's real property? Real property, real estate, buildings, commercial buildings, homes, farmland, parking lots. It produces the total equalized assessed valuation of the school district or property tax base. The equalized assessed valuation, we'll discuss that a little bit later, the levy. This converts the tax base into revenue. So we know that property has value, but we have to turn the property into taxes, into cash value for a school district or a municipality, uh, i.e. a city. Board of Education makes an annual tax revenue request. The levy is the money the school district needs for each fund. It is to be resolved in December prior to the next school year. You must resolve what your tax levy will be December of each year prior to the next year. The Cook County clerk or the county clerk's calculation. People think the mayor is important. People think your aldermen are important. I'm telling you, it's the county clerk that basically determines what happens financially in your city. The Cook, I'm sorry, I keep saying Cook County. The county clerk looks at the assessed, equalized assessed valuation and the levy and then calculates the school's district's total tax rate and tax billings, this is called the extension. What money has been extended to a school system? The county treasurer mails the tax bills and handles collection. We've all received a tax bill. If you own property, you've received a tax bill. Once the money is collected from the property taxes, the funds are distributed to schools and other municipal needs. That's in a perfect world. Uh, we don't always live in a perfect world, do we? Property tax cycle repeats itself year after year after year. If you have properties that are of medium to high value, then you don't have to have tax raises each year. If you have property taxes that are of lower value or decreasing values, you may have to raise the percentage of your tax rate. Taxes are always in arrears. What does that mean? Arrears, arrears. Arrears means this year's tax collection is for when? It's for next year. This dates back to the stock market crash of 1929, the Great Depression. Said never again will this happen. We can't collect taxes this year for this year. We must collect taxes this year for the following year. Let's look at the assessment process. All property has to be assessed. Property assessment is unpopular because a human being is placing value on the property. What is the value of the property? We have to figure that out. How can we determine the worth or value of something? The assessor has to do that. Counties and townships assess properties. Properties are then reviewed by the state and county to achieve uniformity required 
by law. I'll get to something a little bit later as it pertains to how you want your property assessed or your commercial building, your home, or your farmland. So let's talk about FMB, fair market value. Fair market value is a selling price. What kind of selling price? A selling price for an item to which a buyer and seller can agree. I have a clicker right here. This clicker helps me to click through the slides. If uh, a store says that this clicker is $29.95 and I agree to pay $29.95, the fair market value for this clicker is $29.95. Now, if this clicker was $1,000 and nobody agreed to pay $1,000 for this clicker because there were other uh, cheaper clickers, then there, the FMB for this clicker would not be $1,000. Fair market value is just that, fair market value. Both entities have to agree upon the selling price. Property is to be assessed at one third the fair market value. We'll talk about this a little bit later. If you got a property that's $100,000, the fair market, I'm sorry, the, um, the, uh, property is assessed at one third. So if it's a hundred thousand dollar house you own, your assessed valuation is only thirty three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars and thirty three cents, roughly thirty three thousand dollars. Sounds unfair, but we'll explain a little bit later. However, in Cook County, <laughs> because Cook County is uh, a boss, Chicago is a boss. Chicago pretty much assesses the way it wants to assess. Cook County may establish its own classes of property with own assessment factor. Why? Because Chicago and Cook County basically runs the whole state. What did I say here? Cook County and the Chicago area choose to make their own rules due to size, revenue, value, and a number of properties. Chicago also likes to make what? Its own rules. I had to mention it twice. Let's look at state equalization. Equalization is when adjustments are made to local assessed valuations. You're adjusting the valuation assessment of property, making overall assessment of a township or county to one third of fair market value. Fair market value, we talked about that, selling price, buying, selling, buyer, selling, seller agreeing to a price. Exceptions are farms, mines, railroads who own property, pollution control devices, all right? These are things, entities that must exist. So, and oh, these are things that also aren't necessarily bought and sold on a daily basis. Assessor responsibilities. Assessor, get to know your county assessor. Arguably, as I mentioned before, the most powerful person in your city and county. Assessors only have to view and determine by estimate the value of each property. They can say, they can look at your house and just say, that's what that house is worth. <laughs> Seems unfair, doesn't it? They use shortcuts most of the time. What kind of shortcuts? Secondary information, past values. What did it cost yesterday? What did it cost 10 years ago? Stated values. What did somebody say that it is worth? Comparable home sales. Uh, are there, is there a house on your block? Is there a house three blocks away? Is there a house a half mile away similar to your house that went for a fair market value? Whatever those houses sold for, your house should sell for. The assessor is going to use a comp for that and other determiners of value, including subjective matters and gentrification. I get a little upset sometimes, so just bear with me. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Drive-by observations. You can drive by a piece of property and say, hmm, that piece of property isn't worth much, or that piece of property is worth a lot. Databases, sampling, stats are also used. Sometimes the accuracy isn't even important. You'll see that with a video that I'll show you in Moodle. 
Rarely do assessors visit your property before sending you a tax bill. They're going to send you a tax bill regardless of whether, and they probably haven't seen your property. If they have, it probably was three to four years ago. Permits are used to govern assessment. If you add or subtract something from your home, you need to tell somebody. If you don't tell someone, you could be out of compliance or you can miss out on an assessment, which means you may have to do an appeal. Isn't it interesting that people, when they're selling their house, they want the highest assessment, but when it's time to pay taxes, they want the lowest assessment. Hmm. <laughs> wow. All property is assessed every fourth year except for farms. Let's keep it moving. Cook County assesses North Suburban, South Suburban, and Chicago townships every three years on a rotating schedule. Assessors are vulnerable politicians due to scrutiny and questioning of tax assessments. This is why you always see tax assessment in the news. I've got a tip and a note up here. Why does Chicago assess every three years instead of four? Something to think about. Something to think about. New construction impact. Do not budget the revenue impact of new construction or property improvements too early. Why? You're going to be missing out on funds. Let's look at an example with a hotel. A hotel built in mid-year will not be reflected until next year. When hotel is completed and on the tax rolls, the benefit will not be realized until the following year. Therefore, a two-year delay is affixed to a new construction. School officials should also be aware of assessment changes and assessment on building improvements and new construction. If not, some school districts will get shortchanged on revenues. You never want to get shortchanged on revenues. This is why superintendents, school boards, and business managers in a school district have to pay attention to what the buildings look like the new construction and the property values of those buildings nearest the schools. Let's look at business property. Business properties are taxed differently due to construction costs, sales, data, and occupancy. The value of an income property is determined by dividing the annual income to owner by market interest rate. As more stores occupy a new shopping area and rental income increases, the assessed value should also increase. Let's look at continued business property. Some businesses try to what? Hide or mask their increased revenue occupancy. Why would they do that? The revenue, the occupancy hit or rental and leases so that their assessed valuation remains stagnant. <laughs> I got so excited, I flipped the slide. Many will write letters to the Property Tax Appeals Board to increase or decrease their assessment depending on what their need is. Everyone wants the highest assessment when selling and the lowest when buying or currently owning. Farmland, minerals. Farmlands assessed yearly, every year. Why? The value is based on agriculture, output, Income as opposed to fair market value. You don't necessarily look at an acre of land and say, that's what that land is worth. The question is, how much can that land yield? Are there soybeans? Do you have corn on the crop? Uh, are you using the land to raise livestock? All right, so uh, it's assessed a little differently. Appeal, A, B, or assessed valuation. A process where a property owner requests an adjustment or an assessment. That's the appeal. AV or the assessed valuation is the taxable value placed on the property by the local assessor. There's that assessor word again. Very important person in your city. Distribution, payments of taxes by county to schools, equalization. These are the adjustments made to local assessed valuations to bring one-third fair market value to all of the property. Equalized assessed valuation is a property's valuation after county and state equalizations are performed. The extension, that's just the money that's raised through the tax rate. 
by calculation, the multiplier, we'll get into this a little bit later on this semester, but the multiplier is also known as the EQ factor, equalization factor. It is applied to county's total assessed valuation to equalize it to one-third fair market value. You're going to keep seeing one-third fair market value, one-third fair market value. What does that mean? I got a $100,000 house. You're telling me the FMB or the assessed valuation of one third is only $33,000. Dr. McClendon, how can you make my $100,000 house only worth $33,000? Well, if I had to sell your house today, I probably couldn't get $100,000 for it. But the state knows that with the one third fair market value, if I had to sell a $100,000 house, Today, I probably could get $33,000 today for that house. What do you think? You know I'm right. Let's keep it moving. Review. Oversight of an assessor's valuation by county agency. Tax base, the cap, and the tax rate. Tax base. We talked about it earlier. Total equalized assessed valuation of a school district. The cap, also known as PTEL is the property tax extension limitation law. What does that mean? It's the tax cap. If people are being taxed too much in their district, you could put a tax cap or a P-tail on the district to take the stress off of the taxes in that particular neighborhood or particular county. So let's say my people in my city have been taxed 3% every year, 3.1%, 3.2%. We vote for a tax cap, boom, put the tax cap on it, you get 2%. I say, I want taxes capped at 2% for the next five years. Now, the upside is that the citizens who are paying taxes are relatively happy because their taxes haven't gone up. You're paying 2% on your property for the next five years. The downside is that you're not able to raise as much revenue because you've capped the tax at 2%. It's got an upside. It's got a downside. Let's go to tax rate. Uh, property tax extended expressed as a percentage of the E. A V. Rural school districts can be affected by a slow crop year. We talked about that. Agriculture and livestock. Problems of the tax cycle. There can be delays in payment. The more properties you have in a county, the more difficult it is to, to collect taxes on time. How about that? Payment dates are also problematic because county installments are due April 1st. 55% of last year's total tax bill. Second payment is due a few months later. If taxes are collected later, the levy can be inflated to cover significance of late payments. Pay attention to your politicians, your assessor, your mayor, your alderman, et cetera, to make sure that, 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 that your neighborhood isn't being cheated and to make sure that your neighborhood and the neighborhood schools aren't being shortchanged. Here's a slide of um, table three in your book, the seasons of the property tax cycle. Here's the tax increment financing. TIFs are used to stimulate redevelopment of designated areas for commercial or residential use. The property tax growth increment goes to infrastructure for development. Let me give you an example. It's a little bit easier to um, understand. So a plot of land worth $100,000 may be purchased to build a store. So once the store is built, the property may be worth a half a million dollars. Now, the taxable amount is on the $400,000 value increase of the property. A portion of this goes where? To the TIF fund, special allocation fund, and to the municipality and the neighborhood and neighborhood schools. The increased taxes from the store are shared as well. Upside of a TIF, upside. Or you've redeveloped the land, the land value increased, and you can tax on that land and put it into a TIF that's going to go to neighborhood schools. The downside is that many times a TIF goes through what? The equalized assessed valuation is frozen for up to 23 years. So this is delayed gratification. Property value decrease. 
It's evident. If property values decrease, you must raise the tax rate to garner the same amount of tax money. Example, 5% on $50,000 houses is $2,500. Okay? If the value of the $50,000 house goes down to $40,000, you have to raise what? The tax rate to 6.25% to raise the same $2,500. This is why you need to clean your gutters, cut your grass, make sure your sidewalk is swept, make sure that people don't play loud music in your neighborhood. This is why you got to keep stuff clean. You got to keep drug dealers off the corner because the minute your property value starts to drop, taxes will be raised to just to raise the same amount. It's all it's all in the mix. Man, I'm so excited. That's the last slide. Chapter three. Have a good one. Good luck on the test.